welcome to episode 12 of Colonizing Duna. My name is Fred and I will be your driver again for the day. Except instead of just uh, showing you the 250 kilometers that I had to drive in order to get this rover to the equator, I'm just going to show you all the crashes that happened on the way. Hopefully it was safe so it could be reloaded. And some of these crashes might have been uh, caused on purpose. Because I just drove down this hill as fast as possible and to see just what would happen. The game was safe and landman has many lives. <laughs> and those docking ports are really strong. Like, those two rovers stay docked even though it's hitting the ground 40 meters a second in all directions with explosions all around it. As long as they don't really hit the ground, they won't explode. That's really tough. But, yeah, as I said, Lamin's dead, three rovers destroyed. Time for a reload. But, um, what's pretty cool about these rovers in the end is it's really a mobile base. You can go some anywhere and do science now, too bad that on Duna there aren't that many biomes but if there was you could potentially hit them all at once oh there's all the science you need on that main rover in the front I think except the Mungu container I'd have to check I don't remember exactly but um oh yeah and of course the um, material bay it's a little too big except you know I could probably put one on top of uh the second rover I think about it but anyway here's the other crash I was trying to control it the front rover but it's too late and he's gonna die again check the string of those docking ports it's amazing as long as they don't really hit the ground straight up there's some twisting effect that ends up breaking the first rover apart but the docking port is still attached <laughs> this is just amazing stuff and lemon's dead but anyway Wheels. I try to control it a little bit, but for what? It's not me. Uh, it could be salvaged, even if one rover explodes or a mission is a failure, especially if it's landman that dies. So Q crash number three. Probably, I already like, prefaced by this, the dumbest rover crash ever. I just had the SAS activated, but I was in uh, staging mode instead of docking mode. So I decided to turn right, not realizing I was in staging mode, and there just happened to be the tiniest shitty hill. And I tipped over <laughs> 20 something meters a second, which is really like, pathetic. Like, I, there clearly I did not want to crash. Some one of those cases, or there's a big hill, I'm gonna go at 60 plus meters a second and try and see what happens. And I was just, I'm gonna reorient myself a little bit, so I'm really heading south and just, end up crashing like a dumbass but anyway so crash number four here we go 53 plus meters a second 54 we're gonna get some serious air time with this one and this rover the back end being really heavier it always wants to hit the ground first as you get some serious air time but then as it hits the ground itself it just whips the first rover in contact with the ground and breaks the front wheels all the time and then it just becomes uncontrollable at these speeds and just ends up crashing I had this crash happen, similar crashes to this, a lot, just because, uh, yeah, those front wheels planting in the ground, making it impossible to control, and then the back end just crashing. But crash number five, this is a pretty cool one. One of the driving pretty fast, again, 50 plus meters a second, no wheels really breaking, and oh, look what's coming up, a hill. Does that, would that mean hair time coming up? A nice little jump. <laughs> Poor over. Landman. Should be called Schumacher or something. And bam! QR time. And here you'll see the whipping effect I was really talking about. Because last crash it was from view up. And there you see the front wheels and back wheels popping. And then it's just uncontrollable. And the struts plant into the ground, making it even more uncontrollable. And bam. F, right? And gone. Landman is dying again. Poor Landman. I'd be probably lying if I told you right now that watching Landman die does not procure me any sort of pleasure because I'm probably getting more fun out of watching them die over and over again than actually driving the, the, those three rovers around 300 kilometers on the surface to bring them to the aquarium and dock them together. So, oh, I'm counting all the launching and all the interplanetary flights and everything. This is just the funnest thing Landman has ever done. Dying for me, because he's nothing but a puppet in my hands. But we had it, another crash at 60 meters a second. 
Everything just gets vaporized, including poor landman. But what can we do? There's probably ways that I could stabilize this thing a little more. Um, I should just, as soon as I'm hitting 20 meters a second, deploy the uh, landing struts so they explode and I'm rid of them. Because once one of the wheels, or front wheels or back wheels, just explode, those struts just end up planting in the ground and making it very shaky. Whereas if the wheels were just broken, it would at least still be stable and parallel to the ground without anything really hitting them. So this is something I might have to do. Uh, I still need those landing struts to land those rovers on the surface, but I can break them off once I don't really need them. Should have done that earlier, actually. Probably would have saved me a lot of time. Because easily a wheel breaks off. As I said, the whipping effect that this rover creates is uh, the back end is heavier. Just always brings the front when crashing. But in this case, it was just a matter of SAS just changing my direction and crashing. Uh, and driving 300 kilometers. That SAS helps in some, some way because it just keeps you going the same way. So if you just same direction, if you aim south, it'll keep you going south. But sometimes as the terrain level changes, it creates some weird things. But I've been uh, saying bad things about poor Landman for too long now. This is his moment of glory as he saves the day. So here's the hill most of the crashes have originated from. This is where I saved originally and then just send that rover as fast as I could downhill to see what kind of cool crashes I could come up with. And um, <laughs> it's pretty funny because it's steep and long. so. You just have to take the brakes off, advance a little bit, and just not touch anything. Gravity will do the rest, and you end up reaching easily 60 meters a second without any problem, and cool things will start happening. But anyway, for um, I don't know still what uh, the next episode is going to be. I think maybe I'm just gonna bring the lander to the surface. Or designing the Duna space plane that I was talking about. I haven't designed them many space planes, so I'm gonna have to try it on Kerbin first and see what sticks. Uh, thanks to Dezo, who told me that I couldn't use the basic jet engines and I have to go with either Ketan, but then I'll need to mine and more mods, or uh, just uh, liquid fuel engines, I guess. They always work. And uh, try and see what I can come up with. And the launch vehicle for them too. I'm really hoping to be able to keep those planes as small as possible and um, possibly with <laughs> I'm hoping to transport two Kerbals in them so I can or, or make them unmanned so as I said in previous episode I can actually transport them from one base to the other or fly maybe a Kerbal or two from space station to the surface and then bring the, the ship unmanned to the uh, station uh, so we can make one-way trips with Kerbals I haven't played that much with planes, as I said too, so I have to see what I can come up with, and it might be a challenge because I don't know how um, really space planes' performance compare in Kerbin to Duna compared to Duna. So I'm guessing if it performs really well on Kerbin, it should perform even better on Duna. I don't know. I guess I'll find out <laughs> probably the hard way. I'm hoping the first plane won't be a total failure because if it's carrying liquid fuel, it probably means it's gonna be heavy, so it can't really be small. And do I need more wings on Duna that I would need on Kerbin? Hmm. So I'll figure it out. There's only one way to do it, but to do it, that will be for another episode. So, yeah, as I said, maybe for the next one, or the next one, I'll just bring the lander down. I also need to. Um, I need to do refuel all those stations. A Duna refueling station could use a, a refueling because the taxi needs to be refueled and the pusher for a station could be refueled as well. It wouldn't hurt before I actually dock anything else at it. So it can get in a little higher orbit, a little over 100,000 meters. Because each time I dock it, it gets closer to 100,000, it's going to get below it soon. So hopefully. Um, can prevent that from happening by moving it but then I need more fuel and we still need to find that flat space for a landing strip I know our rover are near the equator now so I can just start driving her along the equator until I find a good spot but it's not <laughs> it'd be so much easier if I could generate a map so I'll probably end up installing uh, maps at mod so I can uh, just park a little extension to my uh, station that's already in a polar orbit 
and just slowly over time build up a map as I'm designing other stuff. Like finding a way to send that crane into orbit <laughs> that I designed in the previous episode. The crane is just so awesome. I'm gonna make a test at the beginning of the next video just to show you the building blocks I was talking about with those fuel tanks and just try and build a little structure on, around the KSP center. The only problem is it's lifting 20 tons on curb and it's pretty tough with that crane. That's why it's redesigned for uh, the Mun or Duna where the gravity is lower so the arm should not take that much stress and one can stop the, all that bending. And here we see actually uh, Landman's heroic uh, actions because he couldn't steer his uh, rover at all and could barely break because there's just so much speed. So he just did a quick EVA. Screw this. Moving pretty fast. Screw you. I'm gonna die. No, 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 Landman. Just a quick EVA, repping the wheels at full speed and managing to activate the brakes so we can save his life. So yeah, this is not technically a crash, but I thought his heroic actions were worth being shown and uh, recorded. And I ended up reloading anyway and going down that hill really slowly. And I still have the landing struts on it and everything. Nothing broke off. We were sitting at the equator and just waiting for a... Um, uh, yeah, the map set mod to be installed so I can map out the the ground. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. See you later.